God thy salvation. The God that kept us all night long. Praise God. The hurt on the nature crept in on us. Praise God. I crunk up the car. I crunk up on the first round. Come on. That's enough to praise God for. Hallelujah. Amen. Went to the kitchen. I had two or three choices of which box of cereal I wanted to open. That's enough to praise God for. Am I right about it? Praise God. Nobody broke in on us last night. Praise God. God is kind. And the Lord is mighty merciful. And we do give honor to the Spirit of the Lord. He's the best thing that has ever happened to me. I said he's the best thing. I know your husband and wife the best thing ever happened to you. I love my wife. But Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. He's the sugar in my cornflakes. He's the sweet baby raised on my ribs. Uh, he's the Texas Pete on my fresh water fish straight out the grease. I said Jesus is the best thing. Hallelujah, ever happened to me. Now listen, if y'all would have kept on singing here, brothers, I probably would have floated out of the sea. Pray that day. Pastor, you sound that good, boy. I'm going to have to take him on the road with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. We do give all amen to this great man of God. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's clap our hands and bless God. Amen. We know that John Langley. Praise God. I'm passing a brother indeed. We do give honor to him. Praise the Lord. I've known him for, for many, 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 many moons. Uh -huh. Many, many. I think he's been preaching harder than me. I'm trying to learn how to preach like him. Praise God. I'm just saying Easter speeches, they just keep getting longer. Amen. But that's a show up preaching. Praise God. And I'm so glad to be here with them. And uh, I don't mind being here with them. Praise God. You know, sometimes um, um, preachers have to find it in them to press their way. A certain place. You ever heard people say that I had to press my way to be here? Amen. But some stuff ought to be easy. Everything ought not to be a press. Some, some folks, when they call you, praise God, you ought to have something in your spirit that wants to say, I want to be able to do. Ain't that right? Amen. So I'm so glad to have the opportunity to be able to share a word with you. Praise God. I just want to encourage the man of God. All right. And I'm going to just let y'all eavesdrop on the word. Okay. I can, you understand what I'm saying, don't you? Come to encourage a man of God, but you can take it too. All right, is that okay? All right. I wish I had a voice to preach, but I hollered all last night, and uh, Jesus came in, and headquarters is going to slap us all around everywhere. Praise God! Didn't it slap us around? Praise God! Had me stopping and crying. And you know I'm a thug in the Lord, and you know thugs in the Lord don't cry. Praise God, but Jesus got a hold of me, child, tears and snot. You know that, I mean that good cry, you snot, you can't hear. Uh, you know that's Jesus, the crypt up on game. Praise God, and that's what we need. Praise God is another in feeling. We need the baptism uh, of the Holy Ghost and sign. Praise God. Years ago when they was teaching us and telling us, they told us that we needed the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. It was at 1113 South Madison Street, Whiteville, North Carolina, 28442. Praise God. It was somewhere between the men's restroom and the drum set. Y'all ain't hear me. It was one Friday night and Pastor Kathy Moore was preaching. Praise God. And I was seeking after the Holy Ghost. And they told me, they say, son, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. He's a clean God. He does not dwell in an unclean temple. Praise God. So they taught me that you had to be sanctified. Y'all heard them type of words before, ain't you? You got to sanctify yourself. I heard Leviticus 10 and 10 said that you might put a difference between that which is clean and unclean. That you might put a difference between that which is holy and unholy. Leviticus 11 and 44 said, he said, now sanctify yourself. Uh, did you read that? And the very God of peace shall come and he will sanctify you holy. That word holy was W-H-O-L-L-Y. Uh -huh. Which means that you have a responsibility to sanctify yourself. Praise God. Jesus ain't going to come back off the throne. He not, the only time he coming back is to take the saints back with him. So Jesus ain't going to come off his throne to come smack no cigarettes out your hand. Uh huh? He ain't going to follow you behind you at your girlfriend's house telling you don't lay up with her no more. He ain't going to do that kind of stuff. Amen. You've got to take the initiative. Praise God. The sanctify yourself. Amen. That means that you've got to have a willing mind. Praise God. you got to have a willing mind if you want to be sanctified. Amen. you got to have some strength to tell your flesh no. Um, I'm a preacher a little bit. I'll give it a few minutes. It ain't got nothing to do with what I'm trying to preach it tonight. But you got to have strength. 
Praise God to live in a holy and a sanctified life. Praise the Lord. I forgot who that was. It was it was a rapper so long time ago. He said, if you were scared, you know so and so to go to church. Y'all remember that? Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Remember the lyrics I'm talking about? He said, you're scared to go to church. I said, man, y'all crazy. As many demons I done seen pop up in the service had it cast out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Folks, folks, I had a visit in the hospital. Amen. And they weren't old either. I mean, they was folks that were running the street making money, had good dope money. Y'all know what I'm saying? Laid hands and prayed on them. And I refused to lay hands. My own brother, pray to God. I'm now, I might be telling too much business. I ain't going to give no names you hear. So he was out there in the world doing his own thing. I remember the day my brother said he don't fear man nor God. Yeah, he was bad. He was bad. He said, I ain't scared of man nor God. He was one of them boys, you know, he could just, you know, make a call and say, get something done and just get it done. Praise God. But it was one Sunday morning. Praise God. But it was Saturday night going into the morning. They was leaving the club. Praise God. And somebody was spotting them. They was watching them for a while, watching his movements and what he was doing. And while he was leaving, they shot up the car. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Praise God. The bullet went through my cousins. Uh, was sitting in the passenger seat. The bullet went straight through the through the passenger seat, through his chest, and exited outside the car. That's a powerful bullet, ain't it? That same bullet went through my brother's shoulder and exited out the car. And one of them hit the back of his head. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm trying to tell you. But he didn't know that he had a brother that was to the house saying, Lord, save him. Lord, just keep him. Don't let the devil have his way with him. I know he's talking, fool, but God, if you wrap him until he come to his right mind, just know I want you to save him until he know he's been saved. Praise God. My brother laid up in the hospital. Praise God. And you know how it is. Uh, he think he's on his way out of here and want me coming in and pray. And I said, I refuse to lay hands on somebody. Amen. I'm asking the power of God to come in and you're going to get back up and go finish raising the same hell that you was raising. He talks to folk like that. I, I ain't let you, 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 you leave here today. Praise God. And I ain't going to ask me to preach. I ain't got nothing cute to say neither. Praise God. But I said, brother, if I'm going to lay hands on you, God will raise you up again. As you're going to have a mind to please God. Praise God. I want y'all to know that bullet's still in his head. And that joker is functioning, playing bass. Ain't he playing ball and running and play. He plays professionally. You know, traveling and things, playing softball, praise God. To this day right now, that thug has been converted. Now, that's that's the type of one that I love. You know, they ain't got no church politics in them. You know, they don't care nothing about their position. They don't care nothing about church. They just want Jesus. You, know, you see what I'm talking about? That's the type of thug. Folks that have had an encounter with the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. Amen. Somebody's got to be living a clean enough life, amen, to captivate. Amen. Jesus said that I will give you wisdom yeah, how to be fishers of men. Yeah. Praise God. We ought to be catching some fish. Yeah. Amen. We recycling church folk. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, y'all didn't like what I just said. Y'all yeah. uh, ain't have no church. You recycling church folk. He said that he'll make you wise enough that you'll be able to capture fish. You one that's going to win souls has got to be wise. You see what I'm saying? And the Holy Ghost will give it to you. Okay, that's enough of my tangent. There is a word from the Lord. I got Bible to back up what I'm talking about. Praise God. This, this may seem a little bit unorthodox, but this is the way I feel like going. And I'm going to have you. Praise God. I'm going to call out. Uh, we're going to Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to call out a few verses. Now, when I get to that particular verse, when I call it out, I would like for you all to read out loud the first three words of that particular verse that you see. Okay? Just the first three words of that particular verse that I call out. Okay? All right. Genesis. We have Genesis chapter 1. Praise God. Y'all have Genesis. Genesis chapter 1 when you got it. Say, so read the book. If you're still looking, say, wait a minute. I ain't heard nobody say nothing. So if you got it, say, read the book. Read the book. All right, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. What it say? The first three. That's it. Look at verse 6. First three words. Verse 9. Verse 11. Verse 14. Verse 20. Uh -huh. Verse 24. Uh huh. Y'all see a pattern right there? Uh -huh. Verse 26. Come on, verse 29. Now, verse 31. 
Y'all see that, don't you? There's a pattern that now I ain't got to make you say it again, do it. Y'all see? Let's do it again, because y'all ain't got enough, y'all ain't got enough faith in you. Verse 3. What did it say in verse in the first three words? Verse 6. Nine. Eleven. Fourteen. Twenty. Twenty-four. Twenty-six. Twenty-nine. Thirty-one. Y'all see the pattern, don't you? I want to preach this and If God said it, I believe it. If God said it, I believe it. You know, we got this thing that's going on. Folks say, I don't believe it till I see it. Y'all ever heard that before? I don't believe it till I see it. But let me tell you something. You can bank on God so that if God said it, that you can bank it, take it right and cash it and it won't bounce. Did y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you? Anything that God has ever promised, every God has ever given us a word for, we can trust and we can believe God. Now listen to this. Statistics are low when it reflects the numbers of individuals in the world who feel a sense of confidence in humanity. When we began to ponder on the current state of social injustice in America, the years of restless turmoil and our ancestors uh, have employed in efforts to achieve equality, we find it difficult to keep hope alive. If y'all feel like that as folks of color in America, amen, it seemed kind of hard, amen, to keep hope alive in humanity. It is remarkable that in the world where advancements in technology, science, religion, art, and politics are at an all-time high yet it has left us as a people in the lowest state of being when it comes to physical mental and spiritual health are y'all with me? This generation has put forth a fight and effort in trying to trust and to find some trust and the legal system. But we've learned that trust can't be found there sometime. Ain't that right? But some have even tried to find reliability and tried to find truth in philosophy. Well, we've tried to rely on the knowledge of scholars and of men of experience to give us answers to the burning questions of reason and, and existence. But even with our collection of wealth, of knowledge, Knowledge, amen. That we've accumulated over uh, uh, from these brilliant minds uh, that exist, that we find ourselves still tangled up in a web of confusion. Mm -hmm. With all this good knowledge, amen. With all these good folks and philosophers, all these deep thinkers, praise God, we still find ourselves sometimes still tangled up in confusion. Amen. We have ended up with more questions than we have with answers. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Now, understanding, praise God, that it was an eagle eye prophet. Praise God by the name of Isaiah. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. He said, His thoughts are higher than ours. Neither his ways like ours, for as far as the heavens is from the earth, so is the Lord's thoughts. Come on here. He's higher than ours. Wisdom came unto us. Amen. Through the wisdom of Solomon in the book of Proverbs, he said, there is a way. Come on here. That seemed right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. Y'all remember reading that? And the ways of death. Amen. After the explanation and after insight came unto us by the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah even gave us a revelation. Jeremiah said, praise God, that the heart is deceitful and above all desperately wicked. And that folks is saying that you ought to trust your mind and, and, and follow your heart, whatever your heart tell you to do. But I come out and tell you, the book say you can't even trust your heart. Y'all ain't saying, your heart is trifling. You can't even trust your own mind because it depends on the day. Y'all ain't saying that. It depends on what spirit I'm in. Praise God. You don't want to try me if I'm in the wrong spirit. Amen. If I'm in the wrong spirit and I'm hot and ain't had nothing to eat, you just might get a cuss. Y'all ain't saying that. Man. See, see, I can't trust my own thought. Amen. But if I'm going to operate, praise God, but if I'm going to follow something, I can't trust my thinking. I can't trust my own heart. I can't even trust yours. So what is it that we supposed to do, brother preacher? I heard Proverbs chapter 3. I believe verse 4, 5, and 6 say, trust in the Lord. Y'all ain't getting excited enough for me. With all of your heart, lean not to your own understanding. That's your mind. But in all of your ways, just acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I ain't fooling with y'all. I come to talk to brother Langman. Praise God. We have given. Uh huh. We have given a fair 
shock the science. Amen. We gave philosophers a try, and we've even tried out science. Praise God. After all, amen, science has developed some amazing feats, you see. Uh, you see, all science ain't bad. I know folks will tell you that, but all science ain't bad. In fact, the basis for the formula of science is founded in the Word of God. Uh -huh. the, the, the formula for science has five steps. The, the formula for science is time, force, motion, space, and matter. You can find the formula, praise God, for science in Genesis chapter 1. He said in the beginning, that's time. Then he said God, that's force. He created, that's motion. The heavens, that's space. And the earth, that's matter. Y'all see what I'm saying? You can find the formula for science even in the word of God. Uh, you see, science is good. In fact, uh, that through it we were able to catch lightning and to harness it and call it electricity. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Science is so good. Amen. That we can flip a switch and we can have lights without searching for a matchstick. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Through science we can walk. Uh, we can walk over and adjust the thermostat. Amen. We can have heat in the winter and we can have air in the summer. Ain't that alright? Amen. Science has even created an escalator. Uh -huh. But we're able to walk by still standing still. Ain't science bad. Praise God. All those science uh -huh, we have even amen through science we have even amen put together a metal bird. Y'all ain't saying nothing. A metal bird that can fly without flapping his wings. Amen. It don't fix it to the point. Amen. That through this with science I can have breakfast in California and make it to a concert in Paris by the same evening. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But see even with all of that Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. We can't even trust science because science will change up on you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. To you. Amen. At, at one point, scientists was telling us that light could only travel in a straight line. But after some years of recalculation, scientists have come back to say that they made a mistake and that light can be bent by gravity. But you see, I can't trust something that'll change up on me. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. If we're going to trust in something, amen, I got to have the ability to know that if it was true yesterday, y'all ain't saying it got to be true tomorrow. If it was right last week, that same thing ought to be right today. Y'all ain't saying I'm getting excited. Amen. But I said, y'all ain't saying that. I must sit in this good cushion seat. Amen. To tell you that the word teaches us that Jesus Christ. It's the same yesterday, today, and he'll be the same forevermore. Am I preaching Bible in here? Uh -huh. If I'm preaching Bible, somebody shout hallelujah. Uh -huh. Bible teacher in the word. Amen. Teaches us that Jesus is him that is the same. It is he that will never change. It is Jesus Christ. Amen. That we can put our trust in. It is in Lord Jesus Christ that we can put our confidence in. Come on, am I right about it? I heard the Bible say it in St. John chapter 1. He said, And the word was made flesh. Ain't that what it say? And it dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father. He was full of grace. And he was full of truth. Amen. The Bible says of God. Amen. It's what we have to rely on. We can't trust philosophers. You can't trust science. Amen. Religion will get you in trouble. But there's only one thing I can put my confidence in. And it's in the word of God. Amen. The word is Jesus and Jesus is the word. Back then there was a Bible preacher. I heard St. John chapter 1. Verse 1 said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and God was the word. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was it not anything to me. That was for y'all ain't saying nothing. Am I preaching Bible here? Amen. It's the Bible. The word of God. 
the last word the holy scripture it's the word of God I can put my confidence in the word of God saints is comprised of a collection of 66 books it is divided into two divisions it's the old and the new testament come on ain't that right out of the old testament there's 39 books there's five books of prophecy Twelve books of history, five books of poetry, seven books of prophecy from major and minor prophets. In the New Testament, we got 27 books. In them 27 books, we got four gospels, got one book of history, 13 letters that was written by Paul, got eight other letters that was written of general epistles word of prophecy out of the word of God Lord I feel like preaching in my seat I said out of the word of God we got 1,189 chapters 31,102 verses 783,137 words and out of all of those words there is 8,000 and 70 promises. Y'all ain't saying that to me. And out of all of them prophets, out of all of them promises, a man that was given, seven times a of them were promises that God had made to man. But you see, you got to read it. If you want to be wise, you got to believe it. If you want to be saved, you got to pray. If you want to be holy And you got to use it If you want to live Am I talking right here It is in the word of God That has given us promises lately Praise God that you can take it to the bank There's plenty of promises That he told me about his birth I believe it was Genesis Chapter 3 and verse 13 I believe 15 and say that God had prophesied after Adam and Eve had sinned against God the Lord gave him a promise and said that I am I'm going to send somebody that's going to bruise a serpent's head it's going to be the seed of a woman y'all ain't saying that he didn't say Lord have mercy I hear that say chapter 7 and verse 14 said that a virgin would give birth to it didn't he say come on here church I heard Micah I heard that old Micah prophesy and said that he'd be born in Bethlehem come on didn't he say I heard the book of Deuteronomy I heard Moses prophesy and said that God was going to raise up a prophet like an attorney say didn't they say it church I was reading concerning Jesus ministry and I believe it was David that prophesied in Psalm 38 and 12 said that he would be quiet before he's accused us I know it looked like it was strange that night that they arrested him and why they whipped him and why they asked some questions they said that Jesus never said a moment word. Y'all sing about it, but the book say y'all ain't saying that, that he would be quiet amongst his accusers. And the book said it. That's why I believe it. I heard, I believe prophet Zechariah. Zechariah prophesied. Said that in Jerusalem, we rejoice as him as a Messiah when he will come into a city. If y'all remember the week before he went to Calvary, Bible said it told one of the disciples, said there's an ass. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That has never been ruled. He said, bring the ass to me. And I'm a ride. Y'all ain't saying that into the city. Didn't they say? Yes, sir. I heard Zachariah. He prophesied again. Sometimes 
thousand years. Some hundred years before Jesus ever stepped on the scene. Zacharias prophesied and said that he was going to be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Y'all thought it was strange, Dick, when his own homeboy had ran in the mouth. You know how it is. It's ride or die. The one that said, you know, I'm with you till the wheels fall off. Y'all ain't saying that the folk that say, if you need me, call me. You got to watch some type of folk and because the book say y'all ain't saying nothing it said that his that Judas had betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver I, 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 this ain't in my manuscript but I want to tell you this Pastor Langley I just want to give you Amen. A little piece of something. Amen. I think it's a revelation. It might not be much, but I think it's something. Praise God. You know I'm read. Praise God with the Lord Jesus. Amen. Before he went to the cross of Calvary, said that Jesus had prayed one more time. And when he had prayed unto the Lord, he said, Father, I've been faithful with all of those you put in my hand. Then he went on to say, even the son of perdition is what he called Judas. The son of perdition. That means the one that was planted on purpose. Y- y'all ain't saying that to me. He said I was faithful with the one that was planted to get on my nerves. I was faithful with the one that you put in the ministry. And I was faithful. Although I knew his motives, I didn't show no favoritism. I loved him just like I love Simon Peter. I loved him just like I love James. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, Lord, since I've been faithful of the son of perdition, let me tell you something. If Jesus had to bear a Judas, so do you, saints of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If Jesus bore Judas, there's an anointed brother that'll come over you. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. I said there's an anointing that will come over you when you have suffered uh, even with Judas. Uh, I'm talking about folk you prayed for that still lied on you. And that folks uh, that said it was always going to be there. Folks that had you calling them and giving them prayer and was still telling folks you was trifling. Y'all ain't saying that. There's an anointing uh, that comes over you uh, when you can bear the brother of your Judas. There's an anointing that comes out of suffering. There's an anointing that comes over you from going through. See, salvation is free, but the anointing is going to cost you. Y- y'all ain't here with us. I say salvation is free, but the anointing is going to cost you. You know, I ain't talking about no gifts. I'm not talking about talents. The books say that the gifts and the callings of God. Come on, I repeat. You ain't got to repent and be saved for the gift to operate in you. Y'all ain't said nothing. If y'all don't believe it, amen, they got plenty of houses with that little red palm. Amen, says so psychic readings. Y'all ain't said nothing. It's plenty of witches that got the gift of prophecy in them that ain't never yielded their gift. Y'all ain't said nothing to the Spirit of God. But if you're going to be a naughty, I feel Jesus here. I said if you're going to be a naughty, you got to suffer. You got to go through something. You got to bear under the heavy load. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm willing to go through in order to come out. Come on, say yeah. Come on, say yeah. I ain't got time to fool with y'all. Hey Amen. I ain't preaching today. I ain't got no voice. Praise God. I preach it next time I come. Praise God. Everything that God ever promised, everything that God ever said, it come to pass. He said it about Jesus' birth. He said it about his ministry. He even said it about his death. I was reading in Psalm 38 and 12. said, praise God, uh, Psalm 22 and 18, he said that they will cast lots for his clothes. And then what they said, they said they were going to get bent for the man's clothes. And they said at night when they arrested Jesus, they stripped him off the coat that he had on. Ripped it into them boys was playing dice. Y'all ain't saying nothing. They were shooting craps for the Lord's garments. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I had a 
did it cause? 17 and 11. Say that his blood would be spilled from the atonement of sin. Come on, ain't that right? I heard Exodus 12 and 11. Say that he would be the Passover lamb. Yes, some God. I heard Genesis 22 and 8. Say that he would die. Amen. On a hill called Calvary. Come on, Galgothus here. Ain't that right? I heard Isaiah 53 and 12. Say that he would be numbered with his transgressors. That's why they put him in between. Y'all ain't saying that between two thieves. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. I'm gonna preach anyway. I heard the book of Numbers 23 and 9 say that he would be lifted for everyone to see. I know y'all don't believe it, but I heard Jesus say, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw. Oh, me didn't he say it, brother? I heard St. John. Yes, sir, that's what he said. Psalm 22 and 1 said that he will be forsaken. And you remember when he was on the cross And he said it felt like That the first time ever In his whole life he felt That there was a disconnection Between him and his father He said never have I Gone into prayer And have never felt my father But this time while he was On the cross For some reason he felt the disconnection And the truth Of the matter is the only reason He felt disconnected it was because of your sin uh, and my sin got in the way. Y- y'all, y'all ain't gonna say that to me. Uh, hey, uh, in Psalm 22 and 15, uh, said that he was gonna cry first. Uh, come on, didn't they say? Uh, amen. He said uh, in Psalm 69 and 21, uh, he said for thirst uh, to quench it, he was gonna give a vinegar and gone the drink. Uh, that's why when Jesus cried out thirst, uh, he took a sponge. Uh, wouldn't even give my master water. A glass of lemonade or sweet tea But dip the sponge in a bucket That was full of vinegar Put it on the end of a spear And put it up to his mouth Y'all ain't saying that And when he said I suck He said it's about finish y- 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 Y'all ain't saying that here He said knowing that all things Have been fulfilled According to scripture He said there's one more thing I got to do Y'all ain't saying nothing You know what I read in Psalm 22 and 16 Said that it will pierce him in his hand and they was going to pierce him in his feet now you know what that thing got to me two things I want to say because the book says amen that without the shedding of the blood there will be no remission of sin I read that then the Old Testament prophet prophesied and said that his blood would be for the atonement of sin but brother pastor I was thinking about that thing the night they arrested him the book said amen that they beat him so bad that blood was coming from around his head out of his back, y'all ain't saying nothing. So before he even got to the cross, the blood was already shed. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't hear me. I said before they took him to the cross, I was already saved according to scripture. So my question is, why did a man have to die? Y- y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. When I went a little bit further, you know what I'm saying? And I read the book. And the book said, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but we have received the spirit of adoption on which we cry Abba Father now let's back up here for a minute I know folks that tell you praise God that they black Hebrews around here and they black Jews and all that good stuff let me tell y'all something amen Judaism praise God ain't a religion that's a bloodline amen that's like you amen your mama dad your black your dad black, they mama, daddy black, and you want to be a Cherokee so bad. Yeah, yeah, let, yeah, let me tell you something. Amen. If you won't be in there, baby, amen, we get a blood test. Y'all ain't saying that. You see my daddy's people. It's those people down in Lake Walkamaw. Walkamaw, Suwan. You know, the people of the fallen star. You know, the Indians down there. See, I can take a blood test uh, and prove if I got the blood. Y'all ain't see, y'all hear me what I'm trying to say. See, that quarantine puts a weight on me. You can't see them high cheekbones no more. Amen, but it's in there. Praise God. But we can take a blood test. Amen to prove that. Uh-huh. Amen. So any promises, brother, that God ever made to Abraham concerning his offspring, we ain't got no rights. Y'all ain't here. 
amen, to nothing that's in the book. Are y'all with me? Any promises that God made to his children don't belong to me. But I heard Jesus saying, y'all ain't hear me. Let me go back to St. John chapter 1. He said that unto them, anyone that believeth on him to them, did he give power to become the sons of God. And when we receive him by way of the Spirit, now we can say, Abba, Father, because we have received the Spirit of adoption. Now see that I ain't got to have the blood, but if I've been rolling on the wheel, y'all ain't here, y'all ain't here, y'all ain't here. See, 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 the thing about it is, uh, praise God, that, that, that uh, uh, there's folk that believe because they were adopted, praise God, that they that they are low on the totem pole, you know. My family didn't want me, my family didn't do me away, but you don't understand. By way of the natural, by inheritance, uh, you receive something that way. But see, when you have been engrafted into another family, you got benefits that come from two separate lines. Amen. Now stick with me. I don't believe there's no revelation. It might be something, but if it's good, just take it home. Now he said, he said, now he said, now, he said he had received the spirit of adoption, and which he can cry out my father. Now the thing about it is, if I don't have no blood in me, I ain't got no promises. Yeah. Y'all with me? Well. So if I've been adopted, that means my name got to be in the wheel. I'm getting excited. I said my name has got to be rolled into the wheel. Now if my name is rolled into the wheel, amen, because I'm adopted, I can't have no promises until somebody dies. Y'all ain't hear me what I try to tell you. I, y'all ain't hear me. I said he was already shedding his blood the week of days before. Praise God, but by the time it was ready for him to die, he said that he had to die in order for me to receive the promises. Ain't that right? Am I talking good in here? Now, I went a little bit further. Because I heard him say now, we are heirs yes. to God. Did you read it? Joint heirs, yes, sir. And he said, I'm a joint heir yes. with Jesus Christ. Amen. That, it didn't make sense to me now. Because if I'm an heir to God, that means I'm an inheritor. But there was a key word that came out that he said, I'm a joint heir Amen. with Jesus Christ. Now, in order to be a joint heir, that means me and you got to be able to enjoy it together. Amen. Y'all ain't hear me. And the only way you're going to... You see where I'm going at? No. The only way you're going to enjoy anything with a joint air with somebody, you can't have a joint air with a dead man. Y'all ain't hear me. That's why the man had to get up. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. He died to give me the promise, but he got up so he could enjoy it with me. You ought to shout with good and say, Jesus, I appreciate you. I got to get out of here. I ain't got time to fool with y'all. Yeah, you got me here sweating and sit down. I ain't never sweat and sit down like this info. Got me cutting up, carrying on, jumping out my seat. Breathe, got dislocated me and carrying on. Y'all got me up here acting silly. Now listen. Now if Jesus had gave a word, you can bank on it. Something, something. There's plenty of promises in the word of God that folks have not tapped into. Only simply because they don't even know that they are engrafted into a wheel. Amen. Now, saints of God, by way of trade, I work for federal government. That's all I do. I, I will write contracts and authorizations for vets to have um, health care done. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Do you know how much money is laid up in a treasurer from veterans that have died and family members didn't come claim the money, so it's just sitting there? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Did you know that you around here acting sad and pouting, amen, and sitting around in doom and gloom? Praise God, because you didn't read the book that says, praise God, that weeping may endure for the night, but that joy will come in the morning. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I ain't got to wait till the sun to come up. Y'all ain't hearing me for joy. This is another revelation. Can I give it to you? I ain't even got to wait for the sun to come up. All right. come on. For joy to hit me. I'm getting excited. Because at 11.59 p.m., that's still the night time. But when the clock strikes 12, y'all ain't hearing me in the day. That's morning. Which means no matter what it looked like outside, I can still have joy in the midst of the pitch black. Y'all ain't saying that. Even in the darkest hour, I can still have joy because the Lord promised me. 
Job prophesied, Job 14 and 1. He said, man that's born of a woman has only a few days, and those days will be filled with trouble. Ain't that what he said? Jesus, he went on a little bit further. I believe Jesus said in St. John 14 and 1. He said, now let not your heart be troubled. Be troubled. Now he said trouble was going to come. He said, just let your heart be full of it. <laughs> Y'all really know what I'm trying to tell you. He didn't say he won't go have no trouble to come up into. He said, just don't let that thing overtake your heart. See, see, there ain't nothing wrong with a ship being in water. It's when the water starts to get inside the ship is when it sinks. I just said something. I clear I did. I said it ain't nothing wrong with the ship being in the middle of a storm, in the middle of the ocean. Praise God, but you can't let the ship be overtaken in water. Y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you? Trouble to be on the left, it's going to be on the right, but honey, I'm going to lose. Ain't that a promise to all the here? For which cometh my help, my help cometh. Good God today. Folk depending on government and, and waiting for another stimulus, honey. But my hope is being on nothing less than Jesus' blood and right. I die now. Trust the sweetest friend. I'm getting excited. I'm, I'm so glad my wife's staring at my face. That's what's keeping me sitting in this seat. I in my head, I done jumped up four times and started walking. Praise God. There's promises that God gave us. Now he said, son, trouble's going to come. But he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord, ain't that what he said, will deliver the young out of them all. Did you know that there's folks in the world that have not even come to the knowledge of the truth and they in a world of trouble and don't even know they can come out? <laughs> there are folk out here that's screaming for help and don't even know that they got the help. But you sit here with this word full of promises and won't even apply. God, help us here this evening. Am I talking good? If God said it, I believe it. Folks say, you know, I, I won't believe it till I see it. But if God said it, huh? God said. Now listen, even when prophecy comes, the prophet has a responsibility to speak what God says. But see, it's the saints of God, the one that's receiving the word. You have a responsibility also to the word. That when the word is given, praise God, that you gotta have enough faith to keep looking until you see what God said. Does that make sense? Y'all remember Elijah said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Did they tell us all about God? Then tell me what you see. He said, Man of God, now listen. Prophet, now listen. I know the Lord used you. You done hit and miss this time. Y'all ain't saying that. Folk will do you like that. Now, they, 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 they. now, Prophet, I heard what you said. Now, I tell you, had a, you had a good high streak, but let me tell you something. Ain't nothing out there. Y'all ain't hear me. Say, ain't nothing out there but you said. He said, boy, I know what I heard. Now, go back and keep looking again. Now, the armor girl done went down there. Two, three, four, five. He done took the century. He said, now, man, I got to listen now. I'm starting to get aggravated because it's hard. Starting to get hot now. Ain't nobody know about this word between you and me. I won't tell the people that you prophesied and it won't give us all. It's a statement between you and me. Y'all ain't saying, Brother Pat, I know you say the Lord is going to do this, but I I'm still going through so bad. And now, I'm trying to believe God. I'm trying to mean what you said, but I clear it's hard. I don't see how this they keep looking. Y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you? It's another revelation you can take it fast. Take it on the road and preach it. I believe we're reciting the word. Take this word and take it down the street. Now listen. Elijah said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Not when he said it. His own bear kept to go look and say, I don't see nothing you say. On the seventh round, he come back with a message. He said, well... I do see some now. <laughs> but it don't look like nothing you said. Y'all ain't here. Because you said that you heard the sound of abundance. What I saw was a cloud about the size of a man that's little bit. Put your fist up in the air and do like that there. That's how small it look up in his head. Amen. Now you said abundance was coming, but how abundance going to come out of something that small? Y'all ain't hear me when I'm trying. Now what do you do when it don't look like what God said? Oh, y'all ain't hear my ass again. What do you do when it don't look like what God has said? Tell you what the prophet did. The prophet was so excited. He said, I know what I heard. See, prophets 
are conditioned by way of faith, the real prophet. I ain't talking about ones that operate in the gift of prophecy, but those that walk in the office of a prophet. And there is a difference. There is a difference. I know plenty of folks that's called prophet. I ain't heard a prophesy in the last 12 years. It's sister and brother Blank. And, and call him no prophet. You might be a preacher. I might say that. Praise God. But a prophet of God. I don't know if you have up my spine now. A prophet of God. When a prophet walks the floor, it ought to feel like the hairs on the back of your neck stand. When a prophet of God is, it ought to sound like an amplifier in their chest. When they walk in the flow in prophecy. It ain't in the volume of their voice, but it's in the impact of a messenger that's using the instrument. Yeah, I hear me what I'm trying to tell you. That, that because he is a prophet, he's facing his life off of faith. He's ready to move off of what he heard. And he's trying to get the people to move off of finally what they see. He said, now I know that you're despising this thing because it's a small beginning. Uh -huh. Ain't that another promise? He said, despise not small beginnings. Because that thing is going to grow. Now listen to this. He said, now hurry up and get down to Ahab. Tell Ahab to wash his mouth. Put some toast in his mouth. Get the corners of his eye. Put some brand new clothes on. Tell her, get the chair. Get down here for the rain catcher. Y'all ain't hear what I'm trying to tell you. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. He said, I hurry up now because you're looking at a small cloud, but I know a storm coming because I know what I heard. Yes. Sound of abundance is coming. Yes. We have a responsibility to keep looking until we see what God yes. said. Yes. 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 Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Now, 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 when we prophesy, when God says something, I don't have to have the power to make it happen. No. That ain't my responsibility. No. If God said it, I ain't got to have no strength to make it come to pass. The Bible said that God watches over His word for Him to perform His word. Right. Y'all yeah. sticking with me? Yeah. God will perform His word if He send it out, but it's your job to keep looking until you see what God said. Yeah. Am I talking good? Yeah. Yeah, if I ain't talking Bible, now just tell me hush. Uh -huh. We can't mess up now. But all I say was Bible here this evening. Now look here. After the man of God says this, there's another one, Michael. I love this. There's another revelation. I don't know why I keep dropping nuggets in here. But you can take it and run and do something you want to do with it. Now, Elijah's the one that gave Ahab the word. Because don't forget now, no rain of dew has fallen from the sky for three and a half years. That means nobody has seen a rain cloud in three and a half years. That's why I got an attitude with his honor bird. Because we ain't seen no storm cloud in three and a half years. And you ain't get excited over that little cloud. You should have been rejoicing and praising God for that little bit that you saw. No, a good while you ain't seen nothing all these years. See, that's why the Lord can't bless some of us. Come on. Come on. Y'all see it, man. Prophet said, Lord's going to bless you financially. You just look up a whole bunch of zeros. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Excited for what's in there. I'm excited for when they ran out. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Boy, I'm talking some good stuff here. This yeah. I said I ain't looking for what I'm looking for. The Bible said that there was a woman, won't it? Yeah. Said she could go on to that oil cruise and that meal, huh? And kept pouring that thing out. She had an attitude because it won't overflow. And the prophet prophesied and said, as long as the duration over, that was three and a half years. Uh -huh. Said the Lord gonna supply. Attitude because it won't overflow and out the top. She was glad that every time she poured it out, nothing ran out. You see how a man said it's wrong? See yeah. how we're looking at this thing the wrong way? When has God ever. Listen to me. When has the master never not come in for the rescue? I feel heaven creeping up my spine. This ain't the first time money was looking for it. This ain't the first time them kids was acting a fool. This ain't the first time that husband was acting like he didn't want to come back home. Amen. When has the Lord ever not pulled through? Hallelujah. And you mean to tell me you're going to let this little bit of thing knock you off of your rock from your faith in God? Knowing that the Lord, every promise he's ever made, he's never failed through. Amen. Every promise he's ever made, he's kept every word of yeah. One thing I love about it, he said that he shall supply all of my needs yeah. according to his riches and glory. 
Now, see, when I was young and I read that, I was still excited. You know, you know teenager, little boy, pre reading and stuff. He said, he'll supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. But when I kept reading and I found out what type of money the Lord got. He said, the earth is his. The fullness the world is Lord, I'm getting excited. I don't know what to do. He said, the cow on a thousand hills belong to me. And God is the only father. You never have to take the call for child support. Did you hear what I just said? You'll be grown and emancipated. He'll still take care of you. Amen. Any promises he ever made. The Lord is going to back up his word. Man will let you down, but my master pulled through every day. You'll put confidence in man and it'll fall under. I declare unto you that if you put your trust in the Lord. I say with all of your heart. Don't give pieces of it. Give it all to it. You know what we started giving the Lord pieces of our heart? Because when we was young and you fell in love with that joker. <laughs> And you were just silly. You just gave all your heart. I mean, I mean, head first, eyes closed, just jump. Both of y'all young and stupid don't know what love is. And he dropped it. I can't trust them back. <laughs> Gotta trust so many people so many times. They just like, honey, you can drop head first in the Lord. And you'll never hit the ground. Oh. 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 Y'all make me sweat out my good shirt. I say you can jump head first into the Real quick and say that God said it. God said it. I believe it. I believe. They didn't look confident. They didn't look confident. If God said it, if God I, said it. I believe it. I believe it. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I still ain't fit. I need my right picket toe to move. <laughs> Come on, if God said it. Honey, it looked diaries right now, but the Lord said Amen. that He'll give it peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. He promised it to us, like He said, "If my father and my mother forsake me, He said, the Lord will take me up." Amen. That means when mom and dad leave, He said, "I'll take you under my arm and I'll still raise you." Yes, now we see what the old folks talk about. They say he'll be a mother yeah. to the mother. Yeah. It's different when they testify. It's a different thing when you experience. Yeah. 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 My brother, my, my, my grandma that raised me. My mama's mama that raised me. Mm -hmm. me everything I know about the Lord. And then when the Lord started taking me and giving me revelations, I started teaching her stuff. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But that was my mama. I tell you what. When she passed away, I had some. I had, you know what? You know you be snotting. I use white rags so that I get off in my face because I think I, I think I look like something. So I like the guy rub off in the skin. So I use some white rags. And uh, she was good at cleaning, keeping things clean. So I would collect all of my whites, white garment, because I wore. I wore White garments every Sunday. My kid, I got two props sitting over here. For every Sunday, for about three years, street job, all white. White socks, white shoes, slacks, and, and, and a robe. Just like. And y'all listen, I was so used to my grandma cleaning my whites. Y'all in here. And I collected all them whites, child, and I forgot that grandma was gone. I went to go call. I was saying, she told me how to wash these whites, but I can't think of how to. What I'm supposed to, what I'm supposed to mix is a hot water, or cold water supposed to soak in. Well, I'm supposed to use this or use that. Then she said, "What do I spray awesome on it, or do I put it in the water?" You know stuff like that. I said, "I want to call it that." And try that thing hit me. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm trying to tell you. When I wanted to call her just to ask, just remind me what it is that you said, honey. It hit me. I said, Lord. I mean, just bust out crying. I said, I can't even call it to ask. I forgot. I ain't even have another memory. I was upset with myself because I forgot something that was very important. Uh -huh. Y'all hear me what I'm trying uh -huh. to tell you. I said, now, Lord, where am I going to be able to get this from? I declare unto you, saints of God, that when life hits you, like when grief hits you, mm -hmm. 
I'm talking about real grief. I'm talking about when you wake up in the morning and I mean that thing will wrap around you like a blanket. Y'all ain't hear me. I mean that thing that you don't even want to look, you don't even want to open up the blinds. Your feet don't even want to touch the towel on the floor. Y'all hearing me? When that thing come in like that, the Bible said that the spirit of the Lord will come in and lift up the sand. It takes the spirit of God. You hear me? Because there's going to come a time that there's going to be the touch of your husband ain't going to be able to help you. Amen. When your heart gets hurt, your wife ain't going to be able to. I, all the preachers that I knew, and I knew they loved the Lord. I knew they loved me. Honey, I didn't want to hear nothing spiritual. Maybe that ain't you, Lane. But I didn't want to hear no more Bible. Y'all don't come in being deep. Don't give me no Bible. I know the book now. I, I can quote it left there, but I know what the book says. I just don't feel that right now. Y'all hear me? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't want to go back to being deep. You know, she's going to a better place. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to hear. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Y'all hear me what I'm trying to tell you. When that hits you and no man can find the words, you're going to have to have somebody. Amen. And I'm talking about the spirit of the living yeah. God. Yeah. That'll yeah. keep you from throwing in the towel when you yeah. been wanted to ring yeah. in. Yeah. Y'all hear me? All the promises that God said and all the exploits you was going to do and all this. And it seemed like that when the Lord was telling us these things and we were getting excited about the exploits that God was going to give us, we were making those plans with folks in our mind of who was going with us. Right, right. That was going to be the as the support. You know what I'm saying? If nobody else wasn't going to support your mama was. Uh -huh. I mean, as a teenager, and I knew I couldn't preach a lick. I knew I couldn't preach a lick. But my mama would be right there. I mean, you preach it, boy. Say it, some folks just looking at me sitting down. She a preacher right there. Then she got excited when no folk, nobody would want to come here and preach. When I was young, couldn't preach then. She would come, she would come sit here in this seat and holler at me. And to make it feel like a full room, she'll holler here for a little while. Then she'll get up and she'll go on that side of the room. And she'll holler at me from over here on this side. And then she'll get up and walk away or all around here. And she'll holler from this side to make me feel like I had a full room. You see, you see what I'm saying? If nobody asks, and make it feel like if they ain't there, where in the world is the tangible? I mean the accountability. Because you know church folks say, Brother Pastor, you preach today. The Lord used you. I clear he used you, Pastor. And you know you feel like, man, I didn't deliver it the way I wanted to. I need somebody to keep it real. Hug that Mary That bitch, that Mary Baldwin. Honey, she said, let me tell you something now. I ain't feeling no fire off of you today. I ain't kidding. That's what she said. She would call me up. I, I don't care how good I preach. Folk got saved, cast out devils. Uh, folk testify about the healing of God. The next day, between 11 and 12, she going to call me. And she won the baby. And she was going to pick the pieces of that message. She going to say, now you did good around about him. You got your flesh around about him. You was finished. You should just put the mic down. And y'all ain't here. Oh, yeah. You preach good. Now that was cute, but I ain't felt no fire off of you. I never forget today. She said, boy, I don't know what it is that you're doing or what you ain't doing. But when I get on this phone with you, you need to go in that prayer room and get on your face. Yeah. And you need to cry to God and tell him to feel you again because I ain't feel the anointing like I used to feel. Now that might have moved in, but I didn't feel enough because I know what kind of glory the Lord put in you. Now you better get God's face. Yeah. Yeah. Hear me. Yeah. That's the accountability yeah. that the man of God needs. Yeah. Yeah. Do y'all hear me? Don't wait the tragedy hit and pass the God to, you know, and you ask for your sisters and help. We should be such in a place, if we are in a ministry, we ought to be a help. And if you're not a help to the ministry, you will hinder it. Amen. You ain't got to tell it. Let me tell it for you. If you ain't a help, you will hinder it. But Pastor, I ain't never. Now I yield to Pastor Bag. I ain't never. If you ain't never pushed him, you will hinder it. You dead weight. If you ain't helping push, you dead weight. Now why he just got to be concerned about the conditions of his heart and his mind and have to worry about yours, June Bugs, uh, and Lucas. Uh, 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 huh? Am I talking right? Don't get mad with a bitch and say, Lord, help me do better. That's what the gifts of helps is. I'd rather have the gift of helps over prophecy. 
sick in my church. Yeah. Any day of the week. I want somebody that's anointed to know what to do without me opening my mouth. Amen. I want me to be eternal to get ready to ask for something. Here you is putting in my hand. Jack, you know he's anointed for this. Amen. You see what I'm trying to say? We ought to be praying for these. Like the gift of discernment. Discernment ain't to know what somebody's lifestyle they live in. It ain't discernment. There's a fine line between the gift of discernment and just having knowledge of uh, 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 somebody's movements and stuff. <laughs> the spirit of discernment is to know true from false. Yes. Real from imitation. Yes. That's what discernment yes. is. To know true from false. Real from imitation. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if we don't see God master, I want to know the truth. Yeah. The motive behind this action. Yeah. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. I want when I meet my pastor, he got on a good face. Is that really? Is it really? Is it really trouble? Or do he need some help or something? Yeah. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. And if we're not there being put in place to be that help, to be that push, then we are hindrance to the ministry. Am I talking right? Talking right. All right. If y'all was mad with me, I'm just going to get my car and go back to my house. I'm going to go back to me. Praise God. Praise God. But if God said it, saints of God, we ought to be able to believe it. Y'all with me? I mean, if God said it, I ain't talking about you speaking presumptuously out of your own spirit. That's Deuteronomy chapter 18. He said there are some prophets that speak presumptuously out of their own spirit. They have not gotten the word from me. They spoke it out of their own spirit. Y'all with me? Don't be presumptuous now. Be, be integral. Be real about it. Be straightforward about it. You get what I'm saying? Come on, let's clap our hands and let's praise God. Come on, let's clap our hands and let's praise God. Come on, if we're happy about the word, let's thank God and let's praise God for the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to be a blessing to the ministry. We don't get, I, am I taking over? Let's take over. You want no take over spirit, then come on. I repent him, yeah, but he gave me the thumbs up. So I'll do. Praise God. We're going to go into our pocketbooks. And we're going to go into our wallets. And I know you. I'm talking about that other stash in that corner. You know that, you know that piece of money you put to the side, but just in case. Go into that just in case stash. <laughs> go into your just in case stash. Brother Pastor, you got cash out? Yeah. Okay. The saints already know it. Okay. All right, you ain't got any cash. You know what cash is. Praise the Lord. Baby, can you hand me my phone? Praise the Lord. We want to be a blessing to the ministry. Amen. Praise God. Now, focus say that. Focus say that in a minute. All right. Cash app is dollar sign. The word rivers with an S of life number two. Praise God. Amen. I ain't want y'all to say, Brother Preacher ain't putting an offer in too. Yes, I is. <laughs> yes, I is. Amen. I come from Hollis, but I'm in the country. That's how I say it. Yes, I is. <laughs> Praise God. I want to be a blessing. Those that's got, y'all got cash money. Praise God. You more than welcome. Y'all got cash money. Praise God. Come on, saints of God. Let's come around. Yes, Amen. And let's give our offering. I, we want to be a blessing to the man of God. Whatever it is that you felt like you wanted to give, let's press beyond that is what I'm asking for. Yes, yes. Let's press beyond that. Amen. Let's press beyond that. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Is everybody giving? You got your offer ready? You pay you real good. Saints of God that's watching via stream. Y'all got y'all money? If y'all got it, put a whole bunch of hearts and likes right now. Tell me if there's a whole bunch of hearts and likes on there right now. 
come on, y'all get y'all cash app. Now look, just pull the screen down there and you go to your cash app app right now. It's Rivers with an S. Rivers of Life. And the number two. Praise God. Bless the cash app right now. Praise God. I'm going to tell you one thing they used to tell us. You, know you know the speech they would give you when the preacher would come preach. And they said, it's a token of our love. First of all, it's money and there ain't no tokens. <laughs> uh, we ain't got no trolleys. We ain't put no money, no tokens. There's money in that. That's number one. Two, there's another thing they say. We can't pay you for the word. Now, the last time they told me that, I said, try. <laughs> it's all right to try. Uh, we can't pay you for the word. I said, it's all right to try. Try. <laughs> <laughs> y'all so some of y'all can't laugh at nothing <laughs> praise the Lord we just want to be a blessing I'm, I'm taking my time because mother's got checks out right here praise the Lord <laughs> and it will be a blessing to the man of God praise the Lord make it all out to rivers of life if you don't cash out make it out there checks make it out to rivers of life praise God all right. everybody that's given you press in on your cash out Y'all gonna talk back to me. I pray sin on the cash. All right, y'all talk back to me. Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you. For our eyes have seen what it is of her. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this offering. Father, I pray if you be God and I be your man servant. I pray that you will bless what your people have sown. And I pray, God, in the matter of man days, that you let good news find them from the seed that they have sown. Lord, if you God, and if I be your preaching prophet, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bind the hand of the enemy, that you will cancel the plan of the wicked upon their lives, and I pray, God, that you will send your blessings and your anointings to find them at their addresses. And Father, I appreciate you, Lord, for hearing and answer prayer. Now, you said, Lord, that if we be willing and obedient, that we will eat the good of the land, and we appreciate you for this word, and we appreciate you for this promise, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, all seed souls, let's clap our hands and let's pray to God. Come on, if you're a seed soul, you ought to be happy about it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I still don't want to have no takeover spirit, but Pastor, I got no big Lord before I leave here. Um, I seen you while I was up here. You were sitting in this seat and you were pulled closer to me and I laid hands on you. And I obeyed the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yep, that seat right there. If you don't mind, I have two ordained elders from my church and they both are prophets of God. I'm going to ask if they come and help me. said in your word, God, that you would help those that call upon you in the day of trouble. Now, Master, I pray that you will open up the very windows of heaven. And I pray, God, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost and that the power of God will come in from the heavenly world and touch this mortal body from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet. Father, I pray that the anointing of God and the power of the Holy Ghost will wrap up his mind and wrap up his spirit, wrap up his heart even now, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that you will lift him up from the place that he is even in now. At this very hour, I pray, God. Father, I pray, oh God, that you would take off this old garment of grief, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would lift up the spirit of heaviness and give him a spirit of praise, God. In the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you. And you won't have his mind. You won't have his body. You won't have his spirit in this time of going through. I pray that the anointing of God will come him from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet. I pray that a hedge of protection will 
go over him and to shield him. In the name of Jesus, Father, shut off the very mouth of the enemy. That the one to speak to his ear. That the one to speak into his spirit. To make him feel low then or that you're not there. In the name of Jesus, say the Lord rebuke you. His whole body belongs to God. This is the man of God. Belongs to the Lord. And how I pray that the anointing of God would rest on him and rest in him. Father, if you be kind. And Lord, if you'll be merciful. Lord, would you give him just a touch. Give him just a dose of this fine power that you applied to my life, Lord. Oh, God, and let it rest on him this day, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray that you take him deeper. And Father, I pray that you take him higher. Father, don't let his going through to be in vain. But Father, I pray that you will take him through, God. With your strength and with your help, God. Bring him out with a brand new anointing. Bring him out with a brand new perspective. Bring him out with a brand new power. Bring him out with a brand new robe. Bring him out with a brand new authority. In the name of Jesus, turn his suffering into joy. Turn his suffering into anointing. In the name of Jesus, oh God, comfort him, I pray. Wrap him, I pray. Bless him, I pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord, if you be kind and merciful, Lord, I pray that you hear that you answer prayer. Bless this that man serving Lord. And I appreciate your master. But he ready to ask how to hold my heart. He called me who she can back see the issue. So call it a hissy and I don't call it a kick. So come and kill her cause she can back see the issue. So come and call it a hissy and I don't see it. Come and back see the issue. She come and see the whole of the house. She come and push the hissy and I'm sorry. Ami hasi oba hasi maha Iko ba hasa la maha so maha Ika maha si ashe And we appreciate Ika maha santa And we appreciate Ika maha kasi kalebe hisa oba We appreciate you God For being kind and merciful Ika maha si kalebe na so maha Thank you for hearing and asking prayer Bless him I pray master Grab him and keep him Give him brand new revelation Give him brand new insight Foresight and insight Give it to him, I pray, Master. In the name of Jesus. Hold him up on every side. In the name of Jesus. Do this for me, Master, if you would. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Come on, let's praise God. Somebody give Jesus praise. What a word, what a word, what a word. If God said it, I believe it. His word is true. That scripture says his word is forever. Settled in heaven. Amen. Amen. We give God praise for Come on, let's give God praise. in this season. Amen. To bless us and we give God praise for it. Amen. amen. We pray that God would restore, amen, his friend. Amen. And restore, amen, the virtue. Yes, and there's something about preaching when you can feel the power of God off the word. Yes. That's a different kind of anointing. Yes. And we give God praise for it. Amen. 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 Continue to lift us in prayer as we continue to do the Lord's will. In this season, amen, in this place, amen. God is up to something. Yes. Amen. It, it almost is frightening. Amen. The cost that we have to pay for the anointing, but God is up to something. Amen. We know that this time and this season is only a part of God's plan. Amen. And his anointing. Amen. We're getting ready to go. Amen. Thank you again. Amen. Bishop Baldwin. Thank you to all of you. Amen. For worshiping and praising with us today. Amen. If you would stand on your feet at this time. Father, in Jesus' name, we are most certainly grateful for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our spirits have felt. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, that when we leave this place, we will not allow this word to fall upon thorns and thistles that it might be choked. We will not allow this word 
to fall by the wayside that the sun might scorch it. But we pray, God, that you will condition our hearts to be the good ground that this word can produce fruit in. Father, we love you today because you left your word behind. Father, you said the words that you speak unto us are words of spirit and life. That is what we have heard today. A word, God, that will quicken us, move us closer to where you would have us to be. As we leave this place, but never your presence, keep us in the center of your will and covered under your blood. It is in Jesus' name that we pray always and give thanks. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And go in peace.